Who's that? Who is that? Texture writes in that back in my day was the most self-involved pile of excrement that has ever seeped from Greg Cody's musty corpse. It's possible. It's the holiday week. You weren't trying very hard, right? It's the holiday week. That's a that's an excuse for everything that goes wrong for me. It's always there for me. Mm-hmm. Some people are writing in that they think that Bill O'Brien throws so much to Fedorowicz because he's sort of playing a football scrabble that he thinks that that name is worth <laughs> more points if you throw it to Fedorowicz. Mm-hmm. The truth is you should get more points if you're scoring with Fedorowicz's. Mm-hmm. I feel like, although Gronkowski sort of screws that one all up. Sure does. Hmm. I wonder if he's uh, related to Larry Fedora, the coach. I feel like Larry Fedora's real name could be Fedora. He should wear a fedora during games instead of a helmet. It'd be like his signature. That'd be great. That's the Wedgie of the Week. It is brought to you by Tommy John. The future of men's underwear is Tommy John. Save 20% on your first order with code Miami at TommyJohn.com right now. What makes you think Tommy John wants to be around that particular joke? Why would Tommy John want to be sponsoring that? Wedgie of the Week. Greg, that was yeah. awful. Larry I mean, Fedora. Was... Fedorowitz. Wearing a fedora during a game is visual humor. Anybody get a fedora? It's a Shock new eater! Frank Sinatra hat. Shock eater! Did you know a fedora was a hat? Shock eater! Levitar didn't know a fedora was a hat. Shock eater! Forties and fifties. It raged. It rained. Shock dealer. He comes in here on Tuesdays. Yeah. Mailing in most of his content. But he makes sure to cut out pieces of paper that advertise on ESPNU, Twitter at Greg Cody. <laughs> and for some reason, a, there. a little sign that reads, remember JFK, uh-huh. like his little political statement. Why is that there? Why is there a sign that reads, remember JFK there? Well, he was assassinated today in 1963 on this date in history. And so you want... I want people to remember. Right. I'm doing my little thing. Okay. Remember. Very nice, okay. Very nice. So we want to remember. I understand four years later remembering the butt fumble because we can make fun of the Jets. But do we really want to be remembering the day the president was assassinated? Do we want to be celebrating that? I didn't say celebrate. I said remember. Yep, that's it. Just remember. Uh, it was a big day in my very early life. It was one of my earliest memories as a child. Very impactful for me. And I'm sure for a lot of other uh, older Americans, and I think we should remember. What was that? Um... He should be fine, by the way, right? Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> because yeah, that's, yeah, that yeah, was he, bad radio we, yeah, that we oh, couldn't yeah. make funny. Oh, for yes. sure. Yeah, yes. we couldn't do anything with yes. it. He, right, he gets much? fined $5 anytime <laughs> he produces radio that we can't do anything with that just sits there. Money well spent. And I'm going to go ahead and say a presidential assassination 60 years ago qualifies for that. Um, who was the actor who had that awkward moment on the radio where he went on with some hosts and he said, happy 9-11? He, uh, he actually uh, said... He was a Brolin, the older Brolin. He went on, right? He had that awkward radio moment where... Yeah, James Brolin had yeah. a really awkward... Happy 9-11, happy yeah. 9/11. And then the hosts were like, well, it's not really happy. I feel like Cody's done some of that, like happy JFK assassination day. It's not exactly what you did, but it feels a little bit like it's what you did. It feels a little hey, bit no. like what you did. No. Well, Remember I, JFK? It feels like that's what you brought into the show. I mean, in Greg's defense, it feels like what he's going for here is just, hey... It's a very important day, very important day for Greg. And he's saying, listen, just take it's a moment. It's an awful day. It's an awful day. It is an awful day, but I think Greg is saying, hey, if you're out there, just take a moment and remember JFK yes. and what an awful day that was. Yeah. Is that that's exactly is that a fair well, assessment of what's going on here? Well said, Stugatz. That's exactly right. And uh, I will say this, though. You do have to be careful. It's Dan, Stu, and Greg Cody on ESPN Radio. For you.
Pat Riley, since you know him very well, what do you think he wants? Because he knows he's going in with a team that in all likelihood is going to get, like, as you said. Oh, no, he wants a fight. Oh, yeah, he, he wants, wants a fight. fight. Oh, yeah. Even if the fight, fight results in him he losing wants four games by he 20 points. He wants a fight. And I'll tell you who else wants a fight. Dwayne wants a fight. All right. Dwayne. Well, then yeah. let's fight, man. Dwayne. Let's go no. fight. <laughs> no. Let's Do fight, it. Man. Kill me. I'm here. If Dwayne wants it. Kill me now. We want it. Do it. I'm here. Let's go. Kill me. They ain't scared. <laughs> Do it! <laughs> I'm right here! Wait, Kill wait. me! Listen, man. <laughs> Will you shut up, Stugatz? <laughs> I mean, I'm doing a thing! <laughs> Stop! I'm doing a thing! <laughs> if we were to play I'm that... I'm running off! Blue and LeBron, kill me, I'm here! Moskov! Garbage minutes, give it to me! Hold on, hold on. You guys, you guys, just, I don't think he real. Did you realize that, that Mike was in Schwarzenegger character in I, Predator and all you were doing is just shouting nonsensical things? Yeah, I realized that. But I, th- I feel like I started at first. I was trying to gather some momentum and then Mike came in and I probably should have gotten out of the way earlier. Hold on a minute. Get, I want to I revisit this. <laughs> I want to revisit what just happened. With Mike and Stugatz, because I don't feel, I feel like there was not chemistry there. I feel, I mean, well, it got to the point where I just said, will you shut up? Uh, Because Mike was deep, deep in character, and Stugatz is just running around. (laughs) Mike had smeared black on his face, and it just, he was in the jungle crawling in the mud. And Stugatz is just like popping in with the occasional cliche while an alien tries to kill Mike with nuclear powers. So, like, listen, do we have that yet? We have it? or, or all right. I don't think we have it yet. All right. In the interim, let's go ahead and play the clip for the audience that we're referencing. Do it. Do it. Come on. Kill me. I'm here. Come on. Do it now. Kill me. <laughs> yeah, I messed that up. Oh, you! So- but I can't explain to you how badly you messed it up. We'll see. Because you're just in. Mike was deep in character there. Right. And you're just, uh, it was like seeing a court gesture run out of the jungle in the middle of that scene. <laughs> just, but just run across <laughs> run across it, like run between Arnold and the Predator at the moment of highest tension. <laughs> it just the jingling bells of a court gesture. Just Ace Ventura, <laughs> like doing like a, a hip thrust. <laughs> <laughs> at the camera and then running off. <laughs> I mean, do you realize? A tutu. I can't wait, wait, wait to hear about. I don't think. In I, the, I don't wait. think in the history of this show I've ever hit Stugatz with a "Will you shut up?" <laughs> You've thought it many times, but never actually said it. Oh God! <laughs> I do want to ask the audience: uh, Who are the Heat headed into this fight? If you had to choose a movie character, because some people are saying Randy Quaid. In Independence Day, I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. You make the you 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 make the spaceship explode, but you yourself die. Um, some people are saying Bishop from Alien, just crawling around with like spaghetti. The spaghetti, yeah, falling. <laughs> the spaghetti falling out like half a torso crawling around. The with spaghetti's just, always gonna make me ha- laugh. half of McBob's torso crawling around on the ground with <laughs> with a fettuccine. A, it's a white fettuccine froth. Oh, man. <laughs> that is, <laughs> but, funny. but that's going to be like. Would it be surprising if that's how the Heat tried to win the tap in that series? Like just <laughs> going up against whoever their center is, just some guy at the center court. You know, on the just floor. Rips his arm yeah, up and pretty- throws it at the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Crawling on his stomach. No legs. Just <laughs> trying to jump up using the linguini. <laughs> the guts on the court. All right, Stugatz, listen to this. I can't wait. All right. Dwayne. Well, then yeah. let's fight, man. Dwayne, let's go, no. guys. No. no. Do it. Man. Kill me. If I'm here. Wants it. If Do Wayne it. wants it. Kill me now. We want it. Do it. I'm here. Let's go. Kill me. Skirt. <laughs> Do it! <laughs> I'm right here! Kill me! Listen, man. <laughs> Will you shut up, Stugat? <laughs> Listen, man. Listen, man. Is- <laughs> well, that's, that's what I realized I needed to get out of Mike's bits. <laughs> I'm right here! Kill me! Listen, man. <laughs> 
wait a minute. Wait a minute. It was right there. Let me explain this again to the audience that's just joining us. The Miami Heat are broken. They head into uh, tonight broken, and maybe they advance against Toronto because Toronto's broken too, and whoever advances from this series is just going to get annihilated by Cleveland, healthy Cleveland this year. And we were talking about the condition of the Miami Heat and how Mike wants to be the guy that's hard to put down even though he knows he's going to be put down. The action hero is walking out of the place where he thinks he has killed the guy, and the guy just spits through, you know, spits out a tooth and is like, is that all you got? And everybody's clearly going to die. But the character is clearly going to die. It's just a matter of, really, I've got to go put forth some more effort. I've got to play this fourth quarter. Really? (laughs) (laughs) You're going to make me play second half? I'm going to have to keep my starters in for an extra four minutes? Really? And that there's some pride in being that guy, crawling around on the floor, being hard to kill, even though all of us know that you will be killed. There is no plot twist where you turn into the victor here. (laughs) And so in the middle of that, and it's not quite the parallel because Arnold Schwarzenegger, spoiler alert, does win in Predator. Yeah. But at that point in the movie, it looked pretty hopeless. And he was setting a trap. And and really, the Predator is not unlike LeBron. The Heat will set some sort of trap, and he will look at it with his infrared eyes and just move around it. Because this particular scene, Arnold Schwarzenegger did not win this scene. Arnold Schwarzenegger was trying to lure the, the, the Predator into a trap of his own making, and it didn't uh, it didn't really work. Like what he's telling him, he's he's is imploring. Really, this is where the Miami Heat are imploring LeBron. Go ahead and try and dunk. We're gonna sprain your ankle. Do it. Do it. Come on, kill me. I'm here. Come on, do it now. Kill me. And so Mike got into character as Arnold Schwarzenegger. It was delightful, and he was great. The impersonation was great. He was standing up. He was waving us from this studio into his studio. I wanted to actually kill him. He was so deep in character, imploring with me to do it. I I almost accidentally killed him because I was just moved by his exhortations. But Stu Gatz doesn't get what Stu Gatz, he doesn't get what Mike is doing. Um, and he's just he's just shouting his own gibberish. All right, Dwayne. Well, then yeah. let's fight, man. Dwayne. Let's go, no. guys. No, do it. Man. Kill me. If we want it, if do we it. want it, kill me now. We want it. Do it. I'm here. Let's go. Kill me. They ain't scared. Do it. Wait a minute. Oh. I'm right here. Kill me. Listen, man. <laughs> You shut up. It's the listen man that sent me over the edge. Because you expect more is coming out. No, because you didn't have anything else. It was just no, I had more, but then I realized I was interrupting this great bit. This is what I'm telling you happened there, okay? This is what I want you to imagine as a scene <laughs> change in the movie we're talking about. Arnold Schwarzenegger is crawling around trying to lure Predator into his trap. Now imagine if this had happened in the movie. And a confused sidekick, Danny DeVito, emerges and taking his advice, kills Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's what happened. Well, then let's fight, man. Let's go, guys. No. Do it. Kill me. I'm here. Do it. If Wade wants it, kill me now. We want it. Do it. I'm here. Let's go. Kill me. They ain't scared. Do it! Wait a minute. Oh, I'm right here! Wait, Kill wait. me! Listen, man. <laughs> Will you shut up, Stu Gatz? Don Lebatov. He's a man of the people. That's right. Roy is also a man of the people, and Roy has befuddled me today with the following information, because he handed me a show sheet uh, in which, uh, you know, there was there were some details here about weddings and marriages and stuff and i then learned and i was shocked by this i've never been married so i don't know perhaps i shouldn't be shocked by this that roy's girlfriend 
not yet his fiance, has known for a very long time that he has the ring. Hmm. Did you tell her? Yes. Yeah, I told her. Wow. Well, you, well, you didn't even try to like do a surprise? No. Okay, does anyone else? Uh, okay, hold on, so y'all share, y'all share a bank account? Yeah. Okay, what? well, I mean, but, but once the money goes out, you got to have a story. And there's not a lot of stories for ring prices coming out of your bank account that don't sound like drugs. Well, wait a minute. Bomani just solved this mystery. I must have asked you a half hour worth of questions today trying to get to the answer as to why it is that you told your girlfriend that you had the ring. And you didn't answer any of them. And Bomani cracked you. Crack detective over here, Bomani Jones, cracked you with one question. Because he knows. He knows what uh, questions to ask. <laughs> I was at, well, but my question was, why did you tell her? <laughs> like, that seems like a legitimate question. What's wrong with that question? Why did you tell her? I asked you that 50 different ways, and I never got an answer. Because I was trying to befuddle you at that oh, point. I see. He just ain't got, he just ain't got as much game as us. That's yeah, evidently but not. why did he tell her? I did just you... told you. No, I, I know, but I don't know. Yeah, That's you not the because the rest, that because the rest of us wouldn't just try to cook up a big lie right then. We'd understand the lie wouldn't work, and so we'd just go with the truth. Oh. Tell, tell me right now that you were just thinking, why didn't you cook up a lie? Yeah. Yeah, but how? What? How but do that's you what lie? I do. But I cook how, up lies. I know, but how do you lie about that? Like, if there, are, you know, a lot of, if there's a big amount of money missing, like it's either that or the strip club. Yeah, but I'm not sharing accounts, and that's the other question. Why are you sharing an account? Well, people share in marriages. Well, no, he's that, not married. That, that was the most shocking detail is that he's already sharing an account. Well, Bomani cut through that. Like I would have, I, I would have gone the rest of the time without asking that question. Well, we're trying to get a house. That's why we are sharing an account right what now. What is going? What? What is happening around here? Roy, you're doing it all wrong, like in reverse order. Sounds like he's kind of doing it right. Yeah, you're right. Don't get married. That's doing it right. Thanks, That's Dan. the way to do it. <laughs> texters are uh, texters are writing in here with a lot of questions to the unsolved mystery that uh, Detective Jones here solved with a single question. <laughs> They've got some follow-ups here, Roy. They want to know. Uh, did Roy tell her because he knew she would see the money or did she see the money missing and then Roy told her? No, I told her because uh, she would find out anyway about the money. Okay. Hmm. Um, another texture writes, and I love Roy, but my wife and I have been married for three years and we still have separate bank accounts. Oh, boy, let me tell you, I haven't been married, but that separate bank account married life, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Mike Ryan is a separate, uh, se separate. I, I, maybe I, Mike Ryan can explain separate bank account uh, married life. Yeah, it's awesome. It's it's fantastic. <laughs> no, it's not the way to do but, it. But, though, do, but do you have a joint account and then separate ones for your own disposable income, or y'all just have separate accounts? We have separate accounts. Uh, I'm listed on it just in case something happens to her on her account. Same, but she doesn't look at my statements. I don't look at hers. She has her job that. That money is for saving and spending on, like, Manny Petties and her hair, and I take care of all the big boy bills. <laughs> well, you better not come up short, Jack. That's, That's all I'm it. saying. You better not come up short. It's not healthy. And the way to do that, if you want to have separate accounts, this is the way to do it. You just create, and it doesn't matter if you're doing anything with the company or not, create an LLC, tell your wife you're doing something on the side, and stash the money away there. Really? <laughs> I, I think you uh, Who recommends I, I, that to regular people. Well, not only that, not only that, I think there are government issues in just Dang. creating an LLC uh, that doesn't do uh, anything. Uh, Damn. This, this, this city is fueled and powered oh, by true. LLCs that, that don't that, do that, anything. That <laughs> I'm actually surprised by a number of different things that have just happened here. Um, you don't strike me as the type, you, Bomani, who would be super willing to just up and share a bank account with someone. Yo, once you get married, that's what it is, right? Like, shared. that's the trade. Yep. It is. It's shared. That's the trade. And, and the other part, this is why it's big. Hey, man, you know, I'm not saying that I'm looking at every dollar that's coming out and wondering where it all goes, but there's some things that we need. Some decisions should not be made unilaterally. And the great way to prevent them from being made unilaterally is having the money in the same pot. I'll tell you when that's going to be an issue. Uh, when she stops working, when my wife stops working because she's with child, then it'll be, uh, it'll be, uh, there'll be an adjustment period. Let's say that. I don't understand what Well, you'll is. have a joint account is what you'll have. Well, yeah, because then right. she's not having a steady income on her own, which means like she's seeing everything that's going on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when she's yeah. with child, not only will she see everything, there's a high probability of a freak out. Yep. Yeah.
Yeah, because then I'm I'm not used to having to pay for you know like uh, hair appointments and yeah, yeah, yeah. mani pedis. No, no, no. I'm not talking about you freaking out. I'm talking about her. her. I don't, did yes. you? Re- I think Mike yes. was making a joke. There. No, I don't care about her. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Well, I'll say this, and I can only say this <laughs> from what I've heard from my friends who've been married. You can tell me about this. He's like, I'll be able to deal with that. Uh, the your pregnant wife is upset with you is on a different level than your regular wife is upset with you. Completely different person. You're not yeah, and, and, and by completely different, the worst kind of person in the world. I'm telling you. Like, like I, I had a friend call me, and he explained to me, he said, look, one day you're going to get a woman pregnant, and you need to understand that you ain't never seen anything like this before in your life. And he said that she looked at him, and she told him that she finally realized that she had married into the wrong family and would not apologize at any point for saying it. Yeah. Like the things you'll hear about you and your family and everything else. I imagine that to be more something that would come out during labor. During no. the Oh, no, 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 nothing comes out during labor. Dan, well, the babies come out. I'm amazed at how little gain y'all have, by the way. But seven months, like seven months in, six to seven months in, you will see a different side of your wife and she will see a different side of you and the honesty, like the truth will come out. At some point, the truth will come out. Yeah, no more letting it slide to make you feel better with your limited self-esteem, buddy Roe. She about to hit you with that reel. She keeping it 200. I mean, I, what else could there be? I, I, I've been with her for over a decade. You'll see, Mike. All right, Mike. Mm-hmm. All right, Mike. Mike. Everyone I've ever heard says that the woman in the relationship changes immediately upon pregnancy. I've only heard that. <laughs> I've heard nothing. Like, you expect no changes? Right. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm the good changes, you know? You know what I mean? <laughs> Where is your dad? Your dad the hasn't told ones. you any of this? And now, once the kid's born, wait till this one happens, because it will happen. At some point in their relationship, kid will be two, three years old. Mike will say, hey, it wouldn't be, you know, such a bad thing if you worked a few hours a week, couple hours a day. Maybe no, that's that one. I've already had that no, one. I've already had wait that until one. you see what happens then. I've already wow. had that one. Yeah, that one didn't Woo. work out too well for me. I still have those conversations. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yo, yo, I ain't got no job. <laughs> no, He's been no, married 10 no. years. He's been 11. married. 11. <laughs> No we've got we've got a whole lot of people here on text, and this is not surprising that Miami would be inherently distrustful. Whole <laughs> lot more people siding with Mike on the separate bank accounts than siding with Bomani on. Dude, uh, I just I just conceptually as an idea, I don't understand how you do marriage without sharing. It's the sh- sharing it all. Let me tell you what's happening here on the text machine. There's a lot of you know text tough guys, fake tough uh-huh. guys. Yeah, <laughs> I got separate yep. accounts. I got separate accounts. I got, they don't. Well, okay, they no, do why, not. No, no, no. Why would they lie about because this? people lie about this stuff all the time. No, everybody out there saying how hard they are. Oh, you can't trust them. Oh, you can't do this. Then you get to their regular lives, and it ain't nothing but, of the but, sort. But I don't think that that's hard. I think that's just distrustful. Like I don't I'm think t- of it. No, I don't think of as tough guy. We have separate yeah. accounts. I just think you don't trust your yeah. wife. Yeah, whoa, no, I whoa, hear what you're whoa. saying, and I'm saying, and not that I'm saying <laughs> we know how many wives <laughs> are not going for it, and therefore we know how many of these dudes are lying. I mean, look, Mike has managed to get away with not trusting his wife and telling her blatantly and repeatedly on, every the, on the first and the fifteenth of every month. When Mike is like, "You better have your half of his rent," right? Yeah, he can get away with that. He can get away. Daddy with that. takes care of it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Separate yeah. accounts. Yeah, well, you don't trust your wife. You know, when Mike comes home, it's like, "So, what you going? How you going to uh, get that transmission fixed?" You know, I, I've taken care of it. I mean, there's been a discussion about how uh, regularly scheduled maintenance on a car is, uh, in the long run, a good thing. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine you having a stare talk with your wife, because I'd laugh in your face. I mean, what? I mean, that, Dan, that's why you know, I laugh I have, in your face. I've got a great relationship. No, I feel like you Mike's do, got some pimp hand. Yeah. yeah, I feel like Mike's got a... Where no, you have it now. What the hell makes you think that? They're still in the honeymoon phase. You what? have it now. Wait till six months. Mike, phase. Mike, six months into pregnancy, I've been with it will her for all over change. a decade. It doesn't matter, Mike. Man, uh, look, uh, you guys have your own issues. I'll just have my chill, happy marriage. They're not it's issues. I have experience. Kid, and we're all going to be so happy together. And oh, she's not yeah. going to see my mm-hmm. account yeah. whatsoever. Mm-hmm. She's going to hate you soon. You're such a mark. Yep. Well, this is really giving me hope for the future, guys. Thanks. <laughs> Billy has run out to try and get all these texts printed because it's amazing what is pouring in here. And everyone's got an opinion and all of the opinions are contradictory. And then you'll just see the occasional text. Yeah, she got pregnant and she threw that plaque I won from the longest drive at me. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. like what, what is happening on the text machine? Now, these stories mm-hmm. are the truth. Like, this is crazy what's happening on the text machine. I can't keep up with it, unfortunately, because it's happening too fast.
become very demanding, like six or seven months into pregnancy. Understandable. I mean, they you know they put on a lot of weight. They can't move like they used to. And if God forbid they you roll can't your move eye- like they he's talking about them. Like, they just they can't move around like they used to, Milani. They, they can't get around the corner. <laughs> yeah, they can't get to the corner. And then, the God corner. forbid, like she'll ask you, "Hey, I need another pillow." And if you roll your eyes and she sees you roll your eyes because she just asked for five other things within two minutes, oh, it is go time. She'll throw things at you. She will. She'll break things. Important. The, the guy who wrote about the uh, the plaque for the longest drive says, uh, as a follow up, that the scars above my eye forever, as a reminder <laughs> of that horrible time in our lives. Uh, another person writes in: We have separate accounts, and yeah, I don't trust her. She is twenty years younger than I am. Then why the hell did you marry her? Right. Like, if you can't let your woman see your money, why are you getting married? That's what I don't understand. Because she's twenty years younger. That, that right? ain't a that ain't a reason. Yeah, right. That, yeah, right. that, that ain't a yeah, hold on. That ain't a reason to marry her. You can do everything you talk about wanting to do without marrying her. Mike, for some reason, when you delivered that line, I heard a hint of Alan Thicke in your voice. Yes, so did I. My <laughs> wife and I have separate accounts. What's mine is hers, and what hers, what's hers is hers. Somebody else writes in here that uh, that they have a joint account, and his wife has taken now to monitor, monitoring all their accounts, and so... What's disappeared from his life is the Long Island iced tea he used to have while in takeout waiting at Chili's. Uh, so that's vanished now. Okay. I mean, that seems she ridiculous. She's over Long Island? Right. She's got tight she's got, budget. She's got a close eye. Yeah. I mean, hold on. Just because she got access to your account don't mean you got to be a, a mark about this. You don't have to be a sucker. Well, she's running the household, Bo. She's doing the budgeting. Man. There's nothing close to agreement on this. Like, no, I'm, no, I'm no. looking through no. this, and, and like, some people say married seven years, separate accounts, no problems ever. Look, all I'm saying is you go through all that to have and to hold, sickness and health, all that talk that you got, I just don't understand saying that this money is mine. This like, Because eventually when you do stuff like that, you are going to wind up with things get bad and things ain't going right. That's when people start itemizing the bill, right? Oh, you got a problem with that? What you right here, Mister? Mm-hmm. I paid for the house. Yep, paid that, for the house. That's going to happen. Yep. Like it's invariable when things start going bad. There's an argument about this. All of a sudden, the lights are mine. The car is mine. Like it, you just can't help it. That's why I don't get it. Mm-hmm. Nothing's mine. Everything's <laughs> mine. Yeah. See, I, I don't know what I mean, to do. Take with it this. all from you too. Don't you sleep? <laughs> yes, she will. I um. I don't feel like we've solved anything here. She's not going to leave me, man. Come on. That's what they You all said like right. three or four of the dumbest things that I've heard in the context of relationships, and that might be number one. She sure will leave you. No, she <laughs> won't. Look at this guy. Look at this guy right here. Look at this guy. He is, he is pretty. Come on. He is. He is. He is. Look at this guy. Oh, he's pretty. And he's he's pretty. Oh, you were talking about yourself. Yeah, he he look at pretty. this guy right yes, here. He is pretty. This guy. Mike, you yeah. acknowledge there's exactly going to be a time when you're not as pretty, right? Well, that's true, but that'll happen to her for. I tell you this. I, I, tell you. <laughs> I mean, the man Whoa. had a point. Yikes. Man has a point. Yikes. Yikes. I tell you this. You just better hold off a dear light to this job while you got this whole idea. I pay the bills and everything else. And die, die, die. She ain't never going to leave me. Let the first come up and you ain't got no check. Your situation is tenuous. Oh, my tenuous relationships with Dan. Like, that's yeah. the one that I need Daddy to take care of you, Mikey. Daddy will take care that, of you. You got that right sweat there. over here. <laughs> that's Daddy. Uh. <laughs> We've solved nothing. Like, everyone disagrees with everything that has been said here. And everyone here has said something different. So I don't know what to do with this. Oh, no, look, do what you do. If you can manage to make that separate money life work, bless your heart. I'm just telling you, ain't everybody going for that. But if you can't, Bomani, LLC on the side. Oh, gosh, only in my head. It's not about trust, someone writes in. We both wanted it this way. You That's your, a mark right there. It's not about box? trust. We both wanted it that way. What is she telling you? You, you, your contributions to this are just an LLC. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. <laughs> you just keep forming an LLC to hide whatever it is that you're doing in your LLC. I have three separate LLCs, and none of them are doing any sort of work. That's, that's, what you, that's the third one. Pip it ain't easy, comma, LLC. Hell of a revelation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, write-offs that... are us, comma, LLC. <laughs> the IRS is going to come snooping around here trying to figure out. It's going to get audited in the commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> you know, three, three LLCs, none of them have any employees. All they've got is expenses. There's just nothing. And it's all, and it's all you know, what the... Uh, 
what the strip clubs do where they hide so that you know what do they do what do they put on the accounts like don't they put on oh, yeah, you know like a, yeah like a chinese food buffet chinese or something yeah. <laughs> seven hundred dollars chinese food buffet yeah you come home smelling like three in the morning try that one on the wife like <laughs> smelling like gasoline with a receipt from a chinese buffet no, smell like no smell like body splash that's what you go home smelling like you go home smell like body splash with uh glitter I told Dan one time my friend had he had he didn't have anything on him, but money. He literally stopped at a gas station and doused himself with a little gasoline. <laughs> Fellas, <laughs> got to do no, it sometimes. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> I literally just got back from a Vegas vacation that put me in the hospital. My wife slept in that hospital for two nights, and she asked me, "Oh, how'd you do? Uh, what what happened on your trip?" Spent about five hundred dollars at the strip club. Had a great time. Mm. That's how that happens. Well, Monty, I told That's you. how that there's works. Some, there's good a, for you? You're underestimating some pimp hand over there. No, mm-hmm. no, 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 no. I mean, good for you. No, but he has the pimp hand. I'm telling you. Like I had it at one time too, and then the baby's born, and then you don't have it anymore. Then the baby has the pimp hand. Yeah, well, yeah. Let me tell you something yeah. right now. I feel very confident saying I ain't underestimating nobody that I'm looking at right now. Not you. Not you. <laughs> not you. Not even whatever your name is. <laughs> Billy, not even you either. That's Carlton. That's Carlton over there. Why did you just hit him? Why Why did you just... What? You don't even know Carlton's name, and yet Clint. you know that you're not underestimating him? Uh, How about you have the decency to learn I have, his because name? Because I haven't estimated him at all, therefore I can't <laughs> underestimate him. <laughs> Rest of them, no. Roy? Roy is established that he's got a plan, a purpose, and he knows exactly what he's doing. Mike over here talking about how that woman won't leave him. Famous last words. Yeah. I mean, I will say that about Roy. He seems to have a game plan here. He has a strategy, and I'm actually very impressed with it. It's not the way I would go. It's not the way most people would go, but most people end up, or 50% of them end up divorced. I think Roy's on the right path here. He's doing it all in advance before marriage. I like it. Roy, all you need is true love to make it work, and it will. That's what all our marriages have in common, true love. Just get it, man. You got to have a lot of money and these smashing great looks right here. You see this guy? Look at this guy. Where'd you get all this Look at money? this guy. Where'd you get all this money from you talk about? Look over here. You selling drugs? Daddy take it. <laughs> a lot of stuff going on in here. Getting a lot of complaints via text. There's no accounting for taste. People saying we, uh, you know, Levitard, you've made it boringly clear that you hate your job. Will you guys please talk heat? Will you guys please talk sports? We're coming off of a segment in which Bomani Jones just did a joking no impersonation going around the room pointing at everyone and dropping FUs about pimp hands in here. And Stugatz, Stugatz revealed during the break what I believe to be it has a particle of pimp hand in it. It, it does. I, uh, I'm amazed that I'm still married. We go to the movies now with the kids, and my wife will go into the theater with the kids and see the movie they want to see, and I get to go see any movie I want to see. Does that mean you, your hand is strong, or does that mean you just really get on your wife's nerves? I think it's, uh, yeah. I mean, I that's fine, too. I think like, it's I'm not knocking you. Just no, there's no doubt. It can be both, my... though, right? That's not an either-or, is it? No, I'm convinced that my wife doesn't want to spend any time with me. Okay. I'm convinced of it. But it could be the other way. But it still allows you to do what you want to do. Yeah, but it could be the other way where I go into the theater with my kids and she Correct. goes to see a movie by herself. Excellent point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she allows me to do it for some reason. I just got, I just got a text that said uh, my wife might be listening, so I just wanted to say, love you, baby. Yeah, all that all Man. that hand just went right out the window mm-hmm. once you thought she might be listening to Love your new hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, game has been peeped. I'm surrounded by suckers. I just feel it. Let's do, uh, why are you never the sucker? Because I'm not. Okay. Well, you tell me. You let's... tell me. You let me know when I sound like I'm going out like a sucker and I'll a- adequately address it. Because I'll let y'all know when y'all are going out like suckers and y'all will just sit there and try to change but the I, sucker. I don't feel like there's a sucker mirror, though. I feel like we come in here without a sucker mirror. Like that it's that, that the sucker, the sucker accusation. Sucker sucka mirror. Was that like a Spanish word? No, a mirror. <laughs> a sucker mirror. Like, See, I don't feel I think, like there's... I think the problem that we're having here is your insistence upon saying sucker. That just ain't working for you. Y'all go out like sucker sometimes, and that's cool. So you can say sucker and I can't? No, I, it, it, you just have to take my word on it. All I'm trying to tell you is this. I'm trying to help y'all and elevate y'all to heights that you probably didn't think you were capable of prior. But I'm thinking to myself, though, if I have to just take your word for it, then you never have to hold up the sucker mirror. You can just always say, hey, you have to take my word for well, it. I'm not me, the sucker well, here. You let me know when I'm going out like a sucker. And the well, fact I feel that like you, you're doing the, it kind of now. The, and the fact that you can't adequately find a situation where I do go out like a sucker. Why can you say just... sucker and I can't? I feel like I'm in the middle of it right now. I feel like I'm in the inception sucker moment try, right I, now. I'm just trying to help you sound a little bit cooler that's all i mean i thought i thought that's what you brought me here for is to help you sound a little bit cooler younger yeah younger cooler. is what we went for cool is what you needed i didn't know whether you were cool or not how can i know whether you were cool or not younger is what same we way were going these people, for. same way these people listening can tell 
You guys seem like you're married. But, Monty, uh, <laughs> he did tell me he wants to talk to me later, so you might be right, like, you, when everybody's gone and away from company. Do, do you so, feel like I, I have, so. Do you feel like, uh, do you feel like I have a firm hand on my marriage? Because you, of all people, should know. You. Yeah. I played golf with you on Yom Kippur. Yeah, although I think that's about your marriage to a deity less than your marriage to a wife. But you know what it does sound like to me, though? Y'all have an understanding. Well, the understanding is, is right. Understanding. The understanding is she doesn't want me around. That's and and hey, as long as you have an understanding, that's what it is. I feel like I've found a um, a double standard here. I'm not comfortable with because the textures are all siding with Bomani on Sucka. and I feel it's, like it's not, I, I, I'm just trying to tell you it ain't working for you. It did sound a little weird. I know it sounded weird. It purposely sounded weird, but I don't nah, understand I don't why he gets you know. to. I don't. I don't, I don't understand why he purpose. gets to do it, I and I don't. You, I don't What's happening you, I don't there? I think you did it on purpose. I think this okay. is inequity. Can I try it, Bomani? Tell me how it sounds coming out of my mouth. I think if I were you, I'd just let it ride. Don't go out like a sucker, Mike. You try it. This is such a bad. Nah, idea. I, I, I'm not gonna try it. This Roy, is such a bad idea. Let's do heat talk, sucker. Yeah, one day Roy gonna walk in here and quit, and y'all ain't gonna know why. <laughs> And now, it's time for 15 minutes of your Miami Heat. Brought to you today by Lexus of Kendall and Lexus of West Kendall. We promise, we deliver. I feel like I could say this fairly absolutely. I don't think that you can tell people you're cool and then be cool. Like, I think that's something that's inherently uncool to tell people that you're cool. Am I wrong about this? What would you know about cool, though? <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? What would you know about that? <laughs> no, I wouldn't know much about it, but I've never claimed I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, and that's cool. how you reach that conclusion that you reach. That's fine. Here we go talk about the heat. Don't listen to him, Dan. You're so cool, man. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. That Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I know I'm cool. I don't have to announce it. Dude, whatever Everyone makes, y'all, whatever cool. makes y'all feel good, man. I believe that Gunnar Keel in the history of sports, I'm all in. You can feel free to counter if you like, but I feel like I've got the nuts. I'm all in with Gunnar Keel is the greatest name for a fictional quarterback from a 1990s movie. Mm, Johnny Utah. Yep. Johnny Utah. No, but Johnny Utah, you, you buy in Johnny Utah because his name wasn't Gunnar Keel. If I told you that it was Gunnar Keel and then you watched the movie, you'd be like, what is that? That's ridiculous. There were, if Cincinnati had a quarterback named Johnny Utah. Right. And I told you that it had been Gunnar Keel in the movie, you would say to me, Johnny Utah is ridiculous. No, that's I don't a, think that, so. That, I think you would. No, I think I'd say Gunnar Keel should have been named why, Johnny why, Utah. Why right? Johnny Utah? What is, what's so great about Johnny Utah is the name? It's How about just... Gunnar Utah? Wait for it. Yeah. Hold on a second. We got time. Hold on. <laughs> that's both worlds. Are you looking for real names <laughs> or, or just fictional names? No, Gunnar Keel is a real name. Right, but it, you're it's... making it up as to be like somebody else. What do you got? The first, the first black quarterback in the history of the NFL was named Willie Thrower, T H R O W E R, and that's a fact, Jack. Why did you just do that to me? Willie why Thrower. Why did you just rhyme? No, I understand, but why did he rhyme and bring the show to a screeching halt? Yes. Why did he do that? <laughs> a rare day, daily double for old Greg Cody. Both a loser game show sound and a show killer. You should do both of them. The rare daily double. <laughs> A, uh, a tweeter writes in. All right, here they are. Church of Gronk, top 10 practices, because man, Campbell, we decided he was a pastor. We'll get later in the show to the top 10 characters in the Church of Gronk. But we've decided that man, Campbell, gets to be the pastor of the Church of Gronk. He is wearing, of course, a flowing robe and a muscle tee. No, no copies of a, a Gronking to remember in the Church of Gronk, I'm guessing. He's got a flaming spear of some sort that he shaves with. <laughs> so for Lent in the Church of Gronk, you cycle off creatine. <laughs> 40 days of no creatine. <laughs> That's just for Lent. It's hard, but it's a sacrifice you make in the name of your Lord. That's great. Holy Week, of course, is observed. Spring break in the Church of Gronk. The pilgrimage always to Daytona Beach. <laughs> Communion. The body of Gronk is beef jerky. The blood of Gronk is either a whey protein shake or you have the option of actual human blood. <laughs> the entourage theme song is the procession music for the Church of Gronk ceremonies. The altar boys are referred to as altar bros. <laughs> Baptisms in a hot tub behind Dan Campbell's pulpit. Alligator, optional or not. The confessional booth has been replaced, of course, by a squat rack. 
<laughs> the rosary beads at the Church of Gronk are just mismatched human teeth strung together on some fishing line. <laughs> Turn Down for What by Lil John, first song in the hymnal of the Church of Gronk. And of course, oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got the music on the there. Okay. My three-year-old loves that song, by the way. <laughs> Let me hear that again. I didn't realize we had not that version of it, though. Right. Unless, it, unless there's a SpongeBob version of this one too. <laughs> it's beautiful. It is beautiful. <laughs> I mean, it's spiritual. It's emotional. Uh, during funerals held at the Church of Gronk, caskets are loaded with 45-pound plates so the pallbearers can get a proper pump. And also, the body is just spiked into the casket. Like, here, into the ground, your final punctuation. You are done. You've got more hymnals? Really? I've just been, it's just been whispered into my ear. We've got three more hymnals oh. if you want to go to them. Yes, please. Are you kidding me? Please do. Sorry for party. I didn't understand that. I didn't either. Sorry for party rocking. Okay, oh. sorry for party rocking. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry for party rocking. I don't know what, what show I just saw. It, it, it was about the Gronks. Did you see the, the there was a, some show about the Gronks when they were little and all this and the draft day? Did you see the thing about him on draft day? Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but they said that, well, I assume it's true. They said that uh, that the Patriots actually called him up and said to tone things down a little bit on yeah. draft day because <laughs> just because right. of the, just the way he was kind of going off on draft day right. on camera. Yep. That they, they, had already, they had already laid into him on draft day. But just talking about him, you know, his brother's two, four, you know, they were older than him, beating the crap out of him when he was little. Back to him, no, really bored by Robert Smith talk. <laughs> <laughs> Help me out here, Mike. I don't understand what they are. They're funnier if you explain to us yeah. what they are. They've got those. If sexy they have bodies. to be explained, though, yes, they're not yeah. as funny. Correct, but okay, they've got they those. Sexy got those sexy Ink up those. Ink up those sexy bodies. Uh, well, I'm a bit concerned if we're not understanding the words, is the audience <laughs> understanding the words? Well, I think. Ha 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 hallelujah. Ha 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 hallelujah. Yep. So uh, here is the sound of Dan Campbell. Is this does this sound slightly different than we're going to go through you? I don't think we scare anybody in the AFC East, and that bothers me. And we need to find a way, even if it is two yards in a cloud of dust, if it brings a little thump and a, a little attitude, I think it may be worth it. All right. So instead of we're going to go through you, two yards in a cloud of dust, that leaves us with four and, fourth and four. Yep. Like, if we do that every time, fourth and four, uh, and and there it is. They get the ball. Two yards and a cloud of dust. They say, what happened to Oklahoma drills? And 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 we're going to we're gonna tug a war, yeah. and I just thought of this thing, and we did a rub, rugby scrum, and I just thought of it. What happened? It's now it's two yards and a cloud of dust. Hell, they would have taken last week two yards and a cloud of dust. Sure. How frustrating is it, 11 games into a season, to hear your head coach saying, we've got to find a way. Didn't you know the way 11 games into a season? It's well, crazy. Well, it's that not 11 games into his season as head coach. Though. True, but but right. it, it, the whole franchise is just rebooting itself again. It's frustrating. Lamar Miller, uh, what was it, five yards on Sunday? Five yards and a cloud of poop? Yeah. Was it five yards? I'm not even sure five it was five yards. Five total yards. Wasn't it five total yards? Maybe it was less than that. I'll tell you in a second. How, how, play that sound again. Again, we're going to go through you. We're going to play right on the line. Uh, it was five carries. It was two yards. All right, so there it is, two <laughs> yards and a cloud of poop. I don't think we scare anybody in the AFC East, and that bothers me. And we need to find a way, even if it is two yards and a cloud of dust, if it brings a little thump and a, a little attitude, I think it may be worth it. Great. Dan Campbell telling you they're going to be even more boring.
What kind, what kind of a two-yard rush brings thump and attitude? No, no, no. <laughs> it's a fullback dive. No, but oh, he, they're charged up on the sideline. But line. hold on. When you average 1.3 no. yards per carry last game, maybe two yards, right? Well, it's a two-yard run, and that <laughs> sideline is we fired can get up. Two yards. The crowd is into it. Here's what's happening. Here's, it's that it's that those five-yard outs on third and 11. Campbell's like, whoa, let's scale it back. Too aggressive. Too aggressive. Need to go two yards in a cloud of dust. Dan Campbell was coming in throwing punches. We're going to be aggressive. We're going to run flea flickers. No, 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 never mind. Oh, my text, my testicles shrunk to the size of raisins. Two yards in a cloud of dust. Send a message to the league. We'll get two yards on you. We'll go first down, two yards, second down, two yards, third down, two yards, fourth down, punt. <laughs> Can't they make it 3.4 yards in a cloud of dust and occasionally get a first down? Come on. <laughs> what happened? Uh, what happened to we're going to go through you? I go to Metallica concerts. I sleep in my van. I don't, you know, I'm intense. <laughs> I'm double fisting beers. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I I start every game by putting a scal- scalding iron on my face. Right. He started playing the teams that weren't named Titans and Texans. Yo. That's what happened. Uh, Stugatz yesterday. In his- Time now for Stugatz of the day. <laughs> Who behaved like the Stugatz of the day? This person is a real piece of <laughs> Time you know for what? the Stugatz you know of the day. <laughs> You're going to soften that thing, man. All right, we've got two, uh, we've got two candidates here, both in broadcasting. <laughs> The first is a color man. He is a color man. What game is this, Mike? Do we need any more information on this? This is the most exciting college football game of the weekend. Central Michigan, the Chippewas. A big upset victory at Oklahoma State, I believe. So you'll hear the uh, color analyst jump in towards the tail end and uh, see if you can spot why he's like Stu Gatz. Cooper Rush back to throw it for CMU. Steps up in the pocket. He's going to lob it deep towards the end zone. And it's caught. A lateral back. Chippewa still on the move. Five. Corey Willis looking for the end zone for CMU. And he's in the end zone. You got this. Touchdown Central Michigan. What? What? Who do we have to credit there? That's a college broadcast. No, is that? Uh... No credit. I imagine that's the uh, Chippewa Radio Network right there. Okay. Uh, I love the Homer broadcast. Well, but it's not just Homer broadcast. It's. He's the Stugats of the day because, first of all, he's trampling his play-by-play man yes, yep. and getting caught up in the moment, he says or almost <laughs> says, you've got to be – can I tell you something? He should have gone ahead and done it. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been a better call. Yep. It would have been a better call if he had gotten caught up in the emotion, and I don't feel like anybody would have actually fired him. Complaints. And I don't think anybody would have complained to the FCC – would there be a guy that would complain? You've got to be bleeping An me. Oklahoma State fan, possibly. Would there have been? There would have been. There would have been some guy. I was in the car with my kids. Totally. And, uh, and that guy should be arrested and jailed for eternity. That guy. I like how he tramples him. And that then... guy should. His son should have fatherless kids. Cooper Rush back to throw it for CMU. Steps up in the box. He's going to lob it deep towards the end zone, and it's caught. A lateral back. Chippewa still on the move. Five. Corey Willis looking for the end zone for CMU. And he's in the end zone. You got this. Touchdown <laughs> Central Michigan. Game over CMU. <laughs> he totally trampled the play-by-play he, t- he trampled the play-by-play guy. And he absolutely, he, he, at the end, it was, there were, I imagine, there were several punches thrown in rhythm. Game over C-M-U. Five punches, uh, kind of moving like a transformer. That guy is an ape. Like, that guy is someone no one wants to be. Fr- that guy's uh, Frank the Tank. He's Will Ferrell's character. Game over C-M-U. He's sort of. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who's going to be more Stugats of the day than that? Do we have somebody who's better as a Stugatz of the day than that, this is the play-by-play guy. On which game is this? This is Dan Shulman. I believe it's on a baseball broadcast. Polished Dan Shulman. How is this possible? Let's see. We'd like to welcome those of you who watched Stan Warinka defeat 
Novak Djokovic for the U.S. Open Championship today. It's Novak Djokovic. Oh, did we just catch? Did we just catch <laughs> him? Get stuck? And everyone, Dana. Wow, what just happened there? We just saw silence, and he was reading the name, and he didn't know what he had to make silent, and he realized he looked around the room. That would have so not happened to Frank the Tank from the CMU broadcast. Like he would have just, he would, he would have just burst right through it, punching whether he knew how to pronounce it or not. I think that what what you saw there. Beneath the veneer of polished broadcasting professionalism is him realizing, you heard in the silence, his insecurity as he realized, I should know this name. I should know this name, but it's spelled funny. And this is a name I should know. I'm a broadcast professional. I'm not going to fake this very well. We'd like to welcome those of you who watch Stan Wawrinka defeat... Jovak Nokovic for the U.S. Open Championship today. Nokovic. How about this? The Noker. How about this? <laughs> How about this, Dugat? Is there any worse way to welcome in the people who were watching that than mispronouncing the name of their best <laughs> tennis player? We'd like to welcome those of you who watched Stan Wawrinka defeat... Jovak Nokovic for the U.S. Open Championship today. Oh, I feel bad for him. I want to go back to the CMU. Yeah, guy. I like yeah, the yeah, color yeah, guy yeah, better. Yeah, I, like the, I, got, <laughs> I like the. I got. I like. You gotta be bleeping kidding me! Like at that point, he's just gonna launch it, right? Like just. You know what? His milk man. His career needs to end because somebody else would have hired him with just him spitting curses all over the place. Like, with just crazed cursing, you gotta be bleeping kidding me, bleep you, bleep you, bleep their coach, take off your shirt and then just walk into retirement. Like, just, a, <laughs> that that guy just Frank the Tank right into retirement. Who did they beat? They beat uh, you Mike Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, State. Mike yeah. Gundy and them boys. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta bleep Mike Gundy, <laughs> we rule CMU. Cooper Rush back to throw it for CMU, steps up in the box, he's going to lob it deep towards the end zone, and it's caught, a lateral back, Chippewa still on the move, five, Corey Willis looking for the end zone for CMU, and he's in the end zone! Touchdown! <laughs> Central Michigan! Game over, CMU! <laughs> A lot of you are writing in that the CMU announcer who, because uh, what's happened here? I don't know exactly what's happened here. CMU won on a Hail Mary at the end. And I believe that what you have here is the play-by-play -play guy is a nervous student. And the color guy, it sounds like, is a 50-year-old who went to CMU <laughs> 30 years ago and is still drunk from the tailgate 30 years ago. Correct. Like, that's what it sounds like here. So he just tramples his trying-to-be-professional play-by-play guy, and some people are accusing the color guy of being the new Leroy Jenkins. Now, I think uh, in the other clip, I don't think it's Stan Warenka either. I think he pronounces it with a V, right? I think he, pro he, got, he, I think he got both names wrong. But in this clip... Just one more time, play it, and you tell me if it sounds to you like the CMU color guy is Leroy Jenkins. We'll explain Leroy Jenkins in a second. Cooper Rush back to throw it for CMU. Steps up in the box. It's going to lob it deep towards the end zone, and it's caught. A lateral back. Chippewa still on the move. Five. Corey Willis looking for the end zone for CMU, and he's in the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> Central Michigan. <laughs> See, the play-by-play the, the -play guy doesn't sound nervous to me, but it does sound like the color guy absolutely pushes him out of the way and boxes him out from getting to a microphone. Shoves him yes. out of the way with one sweeping arm, the same arm he takes to throw his cowboy hat in the air. <laughs> Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. Woo. Yes. And so Leroy Jenkins is a 
Dungeon and Dragons type of video game that a group is playing together and see if you could spot where the CMU color man makes an appearance. Uh, I think it's a pretty good plan. We should be able to pull it off this time. Uh, what do you think, Abdul? Can you give me a number crunch real quick? Uh, yeah, give me a sec. I'm coming up with 32.33, uh, repeating, of course, percentage of survival. Oh, that's a lot better than we usually do. Uh, All right, thumbs up. Ready, guys? Let's or? do this. Leroy! Dragons. Always funny. It will never get off. CMU. <laughs> Game over. CMU. Cowboy hat thrown up in the air. The reason why we came to IVF Florida was because we heard it was a very high success rate. So we had chosen this facility basically because, you know, we came and interviewed with some of the doctors and they were right on target as far as what they thought I needed. The office staff was very helpful, warm, friendly. I mean, a type of environment like that that makes you feel safe. It was really the comfort level. I mean, I think that it was the comfort because you're, you, whenever you go into something that's uncomfortable and certainly this isn't comfortable. I remember walking out, you know, maybe after the first or second session saying, wow, I feel this feels right. So what's got, what's happened? Why is your wife screwed up Hanukkah? Uh, she's totally botched it up, man. It's annoying. I told her not. So he said, you know, you, we're not saying that you can't get pregnant on your own, but it might take a little while. And, you know, we've been trying for a while. So he said, you know, your best option would be the in vitro. And he said, and with 90% chance, I think this will work the first time. And so my husband, he was, John was a little upset because he's like, you can't tell some, I mean, like, get your hopes up. That's what I, so I kept saying, he's saying, like, I mean, even 99%, he was like, this will work the first time. And I said, how does anybody know what will work the first time? But I think because of my problems and what I had, and he knew, and he was right, it worked the first time. So now what is happening with your wife? Divorce is happening. Injections that you have to give yourself every day, and there are plenty of side effects that come along with that. However, you know, you're doing this for, I feel, a reason that you, you, you push the, all that aside and you just, you know, get through it. The reward is the ultimate reward. It's children. See, I mean, every now and then he'll say, why is everyone screaming? Does anyone need my help? I'm good at that. <laughs> for me, the, the most memorable moment for me during the entire process was the very end that Dr. Hoffman walked in that day. It was myself and, and, and Abby alone in the room. And he walked in and he said, uh, let's make a baby today. And then he actually said, better yet, let's make two. Could not step out there. I could not do the zip line. My daughter has never been more disappointed. Oh, my God. <laughs> Up to the point where you can go in for the transfer um, when they called and said you're ready for it. Because that's what, you know, all the injections and everything I was talking about, you know, they get you prepared, your body prepared to have a child like you would normally. So I think that was most memorable. He said your body's ready, your, you know, your numbers are fine. And... When you come in and you're ready to have the transfer, and I think because he was so positive that it was going to work, that was the most memorable day. Too. I knew, it, well, I was hoping that it would be over with right there and then, where I could just enjoy my pregnancy and have, obviously, two beautiful children at the end.